You see, a key insight that Western Christians easily miss is that in Christian theology, due to Adam and Eve's fall, the whole person is fallen, and the whole person is in need of salvation. Not just the heart, and not just the body, but the mind as well. So we often get like, okay, I get that my body has fallen, and like, you know, my sexual energies are kind of disordered, and my fear impulse is disordered, and my survival instinct is like out of whack with God. We even get that our heart is often fallen. Like Jeremiah, the heart is desperately wicked, who can know it? But often we act as like post-enlightenment people who think our mind is just purely rational. It's just totally fine, it doesn't need anything at all. Just to clarify, your mind is just as screwed up as your heart and your body. This is the only way to explain how so many brilliant people can be utterly lost. How even the most educated, intelligent, sophisticated people in the world can do things outlandishly foolish and be clearly deluded in their thinking. Professing to be wise, they became fools, as Romans 1 has it. Because all of us is fallen. All of us, soul, mind, and body must be saved, healed, and restored by Jesus. This has got to be why, or at least one of the primary reasons why, Jesus comes as a rabbi or a teacher. A tr- what is a teacher? A teacher is a truth teller, calling for apprentices to believe, or that can be translated to trust, to put confidence in his vision of reality, of the way life in the kingdom of the heavens actually is, to trade in our old mental maps for new ones, because the world is full of people who are dying for a lack of truth. As the prophet Hosea put it, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, As a simple analogy, think of how many millions of people died for millennia because doctors did not yet understand the simple concept of germs and the importance of hand washing. Jesus comes to bring knowledge of reality as it is to save us. Knowledge of what is good and what is evil, what is true and what is false, what is beautiful and what is ugly. To teach you and me who we are, what it means to be truly human, to be you, to separate lies from truth, fact from fiction, untrue narratives about who you are, where you come from, and where you're going from your identity in Christ. And ultimately to teach us who God is. A.W. Tozer famously said, what comes into your mind when you think about God is the most important thing about you. Because we become like our mental vision of God. Whether our God is the community of love that we call Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or Allah, or Krishna, or if we are agnostic or atheist, whatever it is that we call ultimate, our career, or success, or money, or fame, or beauty, or pleasure, or sex, or sexual identity, or whatever, it can be anything under the sun. Jesus comes to reveal to us ultimately the beauty of who God is, and in turn to reset the trajectory of who we are to become toward eternity with God. The savior of the world comes as a teacher. Now, what does all of this mean for our discipleship to Jesus and our spiritual formation into, as Dr. Robert Mulholland put it, the image of Christ for the sake of others? Put another way, if this is what Jesus has done, what do we do in response? If that's his part as the rabbi, what's our part as his apprentices? Well, in Scripture's telling of the story, the mind is where we first turned away from God. Therefore, it is where we must take our first steps to return to the God for whom we were made to live and love. This involves the slow and steady replacement of lies with truth, of thoughts that do not conform to reality and the beauty of God with those that do. A process, and it is a process, the Apostle Apostle Paul calls the renewal of the mind. Here's Willard, all right, here it is. This is is the only quote you get. I had three in the original draft of the sermon. I cut it down to one, all right? I hear you, I overquote, I understand. Here's Willard. As we first turned away from God in our thoughts, so it is that in our thoughts, the first movements toward the renovation of the heart occur. Thoughts are the place where we can and must begin to change. The process of spiritual formation in Christ is one of progressively replacing those destructive images and ideas with the images and ideas that filled the mind of Jesus himself. 
Spiritual formation in Christ moves towards a total interchange of our ideas and images for his.